Welcome to Electron Online, and in our next example, we're still dealing with conservation momentum where both do not stick together after the collision and that energy is conserved. But in this case, what we did compared to the previous problem is instead of having the, the second object moving to the right at 5 meters per second, we're having this one move to the left at minus 5 meters per second. Remember, with momentum, these, these are vector quantities, and we do have to take into account that they're either moving to the right or to the left positive direction or negative direction. So here there's a head-on collision, they don't stick together, and energy is conserved, which means we're going to have two unknowns, both V1 final and V2 final will be unknown, and therefore we need two equations which will come from these two principles, that momentum will be conserved, and in this case also energy is conserved because, that's what we said, energy conserved, this is 100% elastic collision as we call it. Alright, so in the equation for momentum we have M1 V1 initial, plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. And on the energy equation, we get one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half M2 V2 initial squared equals one half V1, nope, nope, I forgot my M1, one half the mass times velocity one initial, oh, that will be final squared plus one half m2 v2 final squared. So notice here now, since both momentum and energy is conserved in this case, we'll have these two equations and we'll have to solve them simultaneously to solve for v1 final, v2 final here, v1 final, v2 final. All right, first of all, we can simplify this one by getting rid of all the one halves. Then we plug in all the numbers that we know, and I'm going to leave off the kilograms and the meters per second to have it a little bit cleaner. So here we have 4 times 10 plus 2 kilograms times, and here the velocity is a minus 5 meters per second, equals m1, which is 4 times v1 final plus 2 times v2 final. And so consolidating what we have on the left, we have 40 minus 10, which is 30, equals 4 v1 final plus 2v2 final. And there is my first um, equation. Actually, you know what? We can simplify that. It's even, right? Everything is even here, so we can divide everything by 2, and we end up at 15 is equal to 2v1 final plus v2 final. There we go. That's a more simplified form. Doing the same with, the, with this equation right here, we have 4 times 10 squared plus 2 times a minus 5 squared. So notice here that the minus doesn't matter because we have to square it, and so energy can never be negative, at least not kinetic energy can never be negative. So this is equal to 4 times v1 final squared plus 2 times v2 final squared. Simplifying the left side, we get 400 plus 50, that's 450 equals 4v1 final squared plus 2v2 final squared. And again, I can divide everything by 2, and so we get 225 equals 2v1 final squared plus v2 final squared. And there's our second equation, and they both have the two unknowns, v1 final, v2 final, which we now have to solve simultaneously. The preferred method is to go to this equation, solve one of these two variables, like v2 final, in terms of the other one. So v2 final equals 15, bring this to the other side, minus 2v1 final. So there we have v2 final in terms of v1 final, and we'll substitute that into this equation right there. All right, giving myself a little bit more, little bit more room, moving this direction. Okay, we have 225 is equal to 2v1 final squared plus, and now instead of writing v2 final, we're going to write what v2 final is equal to from our first equation, which is 15 minus 2v1 final quantity squared. And now, of course, we have to simplify that. We have to square this binomial, and so we get 225 equals 2v1 final squared plus the first term squared, which is 225, the last term squared, which is plus 4v1 final squared, and twice the product of these two, that would be minus 30v1 final times 2, which is minus 60v1 final. All right, now we just have to move everything over to one side and collect common terms. Oh, notice we have a 225 here and a 225 there. That cancels out. Hey, that makes things a little bit simpler. And so now we have 0 is equal to... 
4 plus 2, which is 6 v1 final squared, minus 60 v1 final. And notice, I can go ahead and divide both sides by 6. And so I have 0 is equal to v1 final squared minus 10 v1 final. And since I run out of room, I'll go over here, and I can factor out a v1 final. So this 0 equals v1 final times we have v1 final minus 10. Okay, now that's an easy one to solve. You don't need the quadratic formula there. Uh, there you can simply see that either v1 final is equal to 0 or v1 final is equal to 10 meters per second. The way we do that is, of course, we have this multiplied times this, and whenever we have two things multiplied together, they give us 0. Either one or the other is equal to 0, meaning either v1 final is 0 or v1 final minus 10 is equal to 0, which means v1 final equals 10 meters per second. Now, which is the most likely scenario? So V1 has initial velocity to the right at 10 meters per second. It collides with a smaller object that has a smaller absolute velocity. So I would think that this mass will win over this mass and that will continue moving to the right at some speed. I would not expect the smaller mass at a smaller velocity to stop this one dead in its tracks so that its final velocity is equal to zero. An unlikely scenario, and so therefore we exclude it as a possibility, and so therefore this should be the result. Hmm, actually that is kind of strange as well. I'll take that back. When I think about it, hmm, that's not even possible because it had initial velocity of 10 meters per second and it collides with this object. There's no way it can continue 10 meters per second. It will not do that. So this is definitely an impossible scenario. So even though I felt that this was unlikely, this is the only possible scenario. So I'll have to then say that V1 final equals zero is the most likely possibility out of those two possible solutions. There's no way it can continue at the same speed after colliding with an object coming in the opposite direction, but it's potentially possible that it will stop dead, dead in its tracks with the result that this one will be moving to the right at much higher velocity. Okay, let's try that. Let's plug in zero for V1 final in here. And so that means that V2 final will be equal to 15 minus 20, uh, 2 times 0, which is actually 0. So we can say that V2 final equals 15 meters per second. And now it seems plausible. Notice that this is now moving to the right at a much greater velocity that caused this one to stop dead in its track. Now let's quickly check to see. My initial momentum was... Um, the initial momentum was 4 times 10, which is 40, minus 10, which is 30. So my initial momentum was 30 kilograms meters per second. So I'm just quickly checking this out to see if that makes sense. And now my final momentum, notice if this one is dead in its track, not moving, then all the momentum would be over here. Now that it's moving at 15 meters per second to the right and it has a mass of 2 kilograms, that means momentum final would be equal to uh, 2 kilograms times 15 meters per second, which is 30 kilograms meters per second, which, by the way, is exactly what we had before the collision. So momentum is conserved. These are definitely plausible answers. So V1, V1, V1 final equals zero, and V2 final equals 15 meters per second. And that's how we do that.